Okay, so in um, these problems, we're going to look at, at um, the work that's needed for the worksheet dealing with Part B. So when you do the work to in Part B, remember the direction is going to say clear the fractions. Clear, use a method called clearing the fractions. And you have to find the LCD. Now, remember that, that you got to make sure that, that your denominators are factored. So, so in, in Part B, in, in this particular part of our lesson, um, the denominators will already be factored. So notice that this is x minus 6, this is x minus 6, and this right here, if you think about it, that's 3 divided by 1, so there's not anything else I can do. So the LCD here is going to be x minus 6. All right. So remember the whole point, the whole point of finding the LCD is to get these denominators to be 1s. So you want a 1 here, you want a 1 here in the denominator. Okay? Now, Something else you gotta we gotta talk about, and that is the restrictions. So let's talk about the restrictions. So since since my denominator, this denominator and this denominator have variables in it, we've got to we've got to ask ourselves what makes this denominator zero. So your your restrictions, your restrictions are values for the variable that makes a fraction undefined. See this right here, this three, it's, it's, this is a one. So since there's no variable, this is never undefined. Here though, when x is six, see six minus six is zero. So when x is six, that makes this fraction undefined because I get two divided by zero. So my restriction is that x cannot equal six. Okay, x cannot equal six. Because if x is six, I get 0, and 2 divided by 0 is undefined. Here, when x is 6, I get 6 minus 12 divided by 0. That's undefined. So your restriction is 6. That's going to be important. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's go ahead and, and clear the fractions like we did in previous lessons. So you're going to multiply both sides by the LCD. So notice that here I have two fractions. We'll put that in parentheses. I'm going to say times x minus 6, just like this. Equal. And now notice that since this is just one fraction, I'm not going to put parentheses. I'm just going to say times x minus 6, just like that. Okay? So notice that this is being multiplied by x minus 6, and this is being multiplied by x minus 6. The whole point of multiplying by the LCD is to clear your fractions. You want to clear your fractions. Now over here, though, I'm going to have to distribute first. So I get 3 times x minus 6, don't forget the parentheses, just like this, plus 2 over 6, 2 over x minus 6 times the LCD, x minus 6. So notice this and this is the multiply x minus 6. See it? Now here, I did not need parentheses. See how? You see how I had to have x minus 6 in parentheses here because, because both of those will be multiplied by 3? Here, though, I did not need parentheses because those automatically divide out. Over here, same thing. I did not, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. I did not need, I did not need to put that in parentheses because those automatically divide out. Those factors divide out. Okay, now... Now you got to be careful with what I said also because because some some people would would construe this as being that the way it's written as times negative six. But but what I'm what I'm saying is that is that this if if you just if you don't you don't if there's no misunderstanding then you don't need to put this in parentheses because this x minus six and this factor of x minus six will divide out. Same thing here. Put that in parentheses. These these will divide out. But this definitely has to have a parentheses there because, because both of these are being multiplied by six, uh, by three. Notice though, you have factors of ones in the denominator. So I get 3x minus 18 right here. Plus, and then these factors divide out, you get two equal. And then this is a one right here. One times x minus 12 is x minus 12. Okay, now notice I went from a rational equation to a linear. So let's go ahead and combine like terms over here first. So I get 3x, a negative 18 plus 2 is a negative 16. 
And then over here, I can't combine anything. Now I'm going to subtract x from both sides, bring all the variables to one side, constants to the other. 3x minus x is 2x minus 16 equal, this is 0, and negative 12. Adding 16 to both sides, I get, when I combine like terms, I get 2x is equal to 4. Divide both sides by 2, I get x to be 2. All right, now, here's what you got to check now. See, remember your restriction. You got to make sure, you got to make sure that 2, you got to check for extraneous roots. Check for extraneous solutions. So basically, remember, extraneous solutions, just think false, false solution. So the idea is this. I got a solution here, x to be 2. But notice in the solution process, in the solution process, I started out with a rational equation that had restrictions. And through the process, when I clear the fractions, I ended up with a linear equation. Now remember, a linear equation have no restrictions. The domain is all real numbers. So this right here is a solution to the to this, to a linear equation, but is it a solution to this rational equation? Because remember, this rational equation has restrictions. All you have to do is check this. Is this solution, is, is this 2 a restriction? It's not, right? So that is your solution. So we don't have any, we don't have any extraneous solutions, so your solution is x equal 2. That's your solution. Okay, and you can always check, like, like we did in a previous lesson, so all you do is wherever you see the variable x, substitute 2. So look, you're going to get, I'm kind of doing another sheet of paper. So you're going to get 3 minus 2 divided by, remember x is 2, so 2 minus 6 is, is a negative 4. So you got to be careful with your signs now. 2 minus 12 is a negative 10. 2 minus 6 is a negative 4. So before using a calculator, because sometimes when you use your calculator, you mess up with what you see. Let's think about what this says. So this, whenever you're subtracting a negative, that means the same thing as adding, the opposite. So it'll be 3 plus 2 fourths equals, and then a negative divided by negative is a positive, 10 fourths. All right, so let's see what we have. So 3 plus 2 fourths, so 3 plus 2 divided by 4, and all of you know that 2 divided by 4 is 1 half, so you get 3.5. And then 10 fourths is, oops, I, mean, I did something wrong here. Um, so 10 fourths is 2.5, and I got 3.5 here, so I made a mistake somewhere. All right, so I made a mistake somewhere, and here's a mistake. See where I had minus, and then I had a plus, um, I'm sorry, in the original problem, there's my original problem. See, that's a plus, and I made this a minus, so that's a plus right here. Sorry. So 2 plus a negative becomes a subtraction here. So 3 minus 1 half is 2.5. So that's 2.5. And so 2.5 does equal 2.5. So, so x equal 2 is a solution. So be careful. Be careful when, when you're rewriting information. So you can easily... You can easily mess up like I just did, okay? All right, so two is your solution. All right, let's look at another problem. So let's look at number two. Number two, let's suppose you had x plus x plus four divided by x minus seven equal six x minus 31 divided by uh, x minus seven. So notice that, that the first thing you have to do always is going to factor the denominators, and these denominators you cannot factor, but your LCD is going to be x minus 7. So now the next step is to clear your fraction. So you multiply both sides by x minus 7, by the LCD. You're going to say x plus x plus 4 divided by x minus 7 equals, and then since that's just one fraction, leave it as x minus 31 divided by x minus 7. And so, and so now I'm going to multiply both sides by the LCD. And the whole point of multiplying by the LCD is to clear those fractions. So, so here though, see all of these, 
you have one, two, three rational expressions that have to be multiplied by x minus seven. And here they are, one, two, times x minus seven, and then this one times x minus seven. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute. Now you gotta be careful with this one here because you got the, you, you have to say x times in parentheses x minus seven. You have to use that parentheses here because because that, that x and that negative seven are both being multiplied by x. So at some point, this becomes x squared minus seven x. This right here becomes this. Plus, and then x minus seven times x plus four divided by x minus seven, right? And then these x minus sevens divide out. And so all you're left with is one times x plus four, which is just x plus four. So, so this times this becomes just this. Equal, and then these x minus sevens divide out, so you get six x minus 31. Six x minus 31. Notice now though, it went from a rational equation to a quadratic. So let's go ahead and combine like terms first. So I get x squared, a negative seven x and a positive x is a negative six x plus four equals six x minus 31. All right, let, now remember this is quadratic, so let's bring everything to one side. I need zero on the other side. Because remember, in solving a quadratic equation, for us at this point, wh wh whether you already know how to use the quadratic formula or not, you need zero on the other side. So let's go ahead and subtract six x from both sides. And when I do that, I get, si I get x squared, six, a negative six x and negative six x is a negative 12 x plus four equal this is zero, and zero minus 31 is a negative 31. Adding 31 to both sides, I get x squared minus 12x plus 35 equal zero. Now before I go one, remember I gotta find the restrictions. You have to find the restrictions. So what makes this denominator zero? So what makes this denominator zero is when x is seven, right? I mean, think about this. So you're asking what makes x minus seven zero? x minus seven zero when x is seven. So your restriction is that x cannot equal seven. Because if x were seven, this would be zero. And that makes this undefined. Same thing here, undefined. So x is seven is, is your restriction. So now let's go ahead and factor this, this quadratic. So when I factor this, I'm gonna get x um, minus seven, x minus five. Okay, so x minus seven, x minus five. And so always check, x times x is x squared, a negative seven x and a negative five x is a, is a negative 12 x, right? And then negative seven times negative five is a positive 35. Setting each factor equal to zero, using a zero factor property, I get x minus seven equals zero, x minus five equals zero. Solving for x, I get x to be seven, x to be five. Now I want you to notice something, don't, you gotta remember, these, these are solutions to this quadratic, to the quadratic, but, they're, but you gotta remember this, this original equation was a rational equation. You had restrictions. One of my restrictions was seven. So, so remember in the previous problem, you had to check for extraneous solutions. So you gotta check for extraneous solution. Always remember that when you're dealing with a rational equation. You have to check for extraneous solutions. And so basically what you ask yourself is this, is seven an extraneous solution, meaning false? Is seven a false solution? Is five a false solution? All you have to do, if you did this correct, is look at your restriction. My restriction is seven. Well, there's a seven here, so that is that is your extraneous solution. So my extraneous solution is seven right here. This is extraneous. So that's not a solution. So meaning that's not a solution. Not a solution. So your only solution is five. So the answer, you're gonna say x equal five. That's your only solution. Okay, but that's your work. That's all your work. Remember though, you, you are gonna be asked to determine the restrictions, use, use the restriction to see if any of your solutions are extraneous or not, okay? All right, and then again, you can, you can always quickly check five, so you just go back in the original, so watch what happens. 
make um, do that here. So let's just check check um, x equal five. So let's just check real quick. So I get five plus five plus four is nine. Five minus seven is a negative two. And I want to see if that's going to equal six times five is thirty, right? Thirty minus thirty-one is a negative one. Five minus seven is a negative two. So so this is five plus a negative nine halves means five minus nine halves, right? All right, so let's see what we get. Five minus nine divided by two equals 0 0.5. A negative divided by negative is a positive, and one half is 0 0.5, so that works. All right, so x equal five is our solution. See, if you had said seven, if you had said seven, I want you to see this. If you said seven, you get 7 plus 4 is 11. 7 minus 7 is 0. Remember, that's undefined. That's undefined. So that's why, that's why 7 is extraneous. It's not a solution. It's a false solution. It's a solution to this quadratic. This quadratic right here. It's a solution to the quadratic. But, the, but my original problem was a, was a, a, a rational equation. So you have to check the original problem. And all you do is look at the restrictions. Okay, so that is how you're going to show the work for, for um, part B. So in part B, in part B, <clears throat> this, is, this is the work you're going to show. All right, so that's going to be the end of um, these two problems.